Good morning, everyone. You know what today is. Test the Tuesday. That time when we test your incredible knowledge of the scriptures. Especially as we look into the Old Testament. Yeah. And we're going into a very familiar story. You know it. You had it as a little kid in Sunday school. The Golden Calf. Yeah, remember Abraham went up in the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, but he was taken forever to get back, and the people said to Aaron, who is Moses' right-hand man, um, make us a god so that we can pray to this god, because we don't know what happened to the old geezer. Oh, they didn't say that, but you know, Moses by this time was getting up in years. And, um, well, that is the essence of our Testy Tuesday Make us a God. Well, Aaron did just that, and you know he made it out of gold. Where did he get the gold from? Aha! Uh -huh. Did you ever really look at that fine detail of the story? Where did he get the gold from? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of answers, and you pick the right one. Number one, as the people were leaving Egypt, as the slaves were being freed, they plundered the Egyptians. They took all their jewelry and their clothing. That's number one. Number two, they had unearthed secret stores of gold and silver and other precious metals that their ancestors had buried and then passed it on by word of mouth um, as the people were being taken into slavery. All right? And number three, yeah, there's a lot of nice jewelry stores on that little strip going right out of uh, Egypt. And they just stopped and, you know, helped themselves to a few. Yep, yep, that's it. Okay, your three your three answers. They plundered the Egyptian households and, and took their, their jewelry and their clothing. Number two, they unearthed secret stashes that their ancestors had had put away, buried before they were hauled away into slavery. And number three, they stopped at the local jewelry stores. You know what the answer is. They plundered the homes of the Egyptians. Now, you might uh, wonder, wait a minute. Uh, isn't this a little weird that the people leaving and, and trying to escape slavery are suddenly going to turn around and, and plunder those who had enslaved them. It is a little strange, isn't it? But after the last plague in which the firstborn of each Egyptian household died, they were more than willing to give that stuff up. But just a little strange anyhow that, uh, that that's something that they would do on their way out. But it does answer the question, where did Aaron get the gold to make the golden calf? Now, a couple things about this story. Um, well, what I was reading was actually before what we are going to be reading this coming Sunday. We're going to start with verse 7 of chapter 32. I started with verse 1. And you need to read those first six verses to kind of get the essence of what's going on. Yep, uh, Mo Moses had gone up in the mountain. with People didn't know where he was and what he's do doing and why he's taking so long. So now they're getting a little antsy. And they tell Aaron... <laughs> Build us a God. No, wait a minute. It says here, build us God. Make gods for us. And I said, build us a God. Ah, see, that's a little strange thing there. In the uh, Hebrew, the word for God is El. But here it says Elohim, which is the plural form of El, of God. Hmm. So what's going on? Well, there's two possibilities here. Scholars are kind of divided on it. There are some who say, look, there's that, what they call the plural of majesty, which puts, when you use the plural form of a, any kind of a noun, it makes it the most supreme. So are, are the people saying to Aaron, make us a God, the most supreme God? Or are they going back to what they did back in Egypt? I'm sure by now, the people being surrounded by this culture of many, many deities, many gods, they were worshiping gods. And there's quite a bit of uh, evidence in ar archaeological digs that show that throughout the history of the people, they kind of 
in, in fact, we have it in Scripture too. They went back and forth between worshiping Yahweh, the the supreme God, that would be the Elohim, and also the gods, Elohim, plural, meaning gods of the Canaanites and other people. Oh uh, yeah, they did it. They they waffled back and forth between the two quite a bit. So we don't know exactly what's going on here, but if you look at the context, it kind of indicates it meant a supreme God. Because how many golden calves did Aaron make? One. Just one. Uh, and by the way, a better translation of the word calf would be young bull. In other words, one that's that's kind of wild and crazy and, you know, just just wants to do a lot of crazy stuff. A wild bull. So, golden calf sounds like something you go up and pet, right? Oh, look, little calf. No, it's a bull. Bull, strength, power. Okay. Now, as we read this passage, though, the interesting thing about it is... God wants to wipe out his people and start all over again. You think, what? Yeah, God tells uh, Moses up there in the mountain, look down there, those people that you brought out of Egypt, look what they're doing. They're, they're rebelling against me. They've forgotten everything that I did. Now they want to build an, another God. And in fact, they've done it. I, you know, just lay back, uh, Moses, for a minute, and I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to go down there and just wipe them all out. Well, interesting he even offers to Moses the fact that he'll start something new from Moses' lineage. Not Abraham's, but Moses' lineage. Wow. Pretty crazy stuff. But Moses is there to remind God that he made a promise. And that promise was to Abraham that through Abraham and his descendants, through Abraham and his descendants, not Moses and his descendants, Abraham and his descendants, that he would um, be a, a light to, to the nations and, and be a great nation. <laughs> kind of cool, right? And this is one of those passages where we can honestly look at it and say, yep, you know, we have a God who changes his mind. And Moses helped change God's mind in this passage. Isn't that fascinating? Did you ever think of that? Moses changed God's mind. Can we change God's mind? I'm going to let you live with that for a while because that's something I have to live with too. Can I change God's mind? Well, as it all turns out, yes, God does relent. He doesn't destroy the people. Oh, there is a little thing that comes a little bit later in which uh, many people are put to death because of what happened here, this little rebellion that went on. And there was some pretty not-so-nice stuff that happened in regards to this rebellion. But uh, in the end, God saved his people. And as if you just flip a, a couple chapters over, you get to chapter 34, and it says this, The Lord, the Lord a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the guilty, but visiting, visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So we have a God who is forgiving and loving and caring, but also one who says, you know, Sometimes you just don't get away with the consequences of your sin. Ah, something to think about there too. Both grace, but also, hey, sometimes you pay. You pay for what you did. Uh, and there's just no escaping that. An awful lot going on in this whole story of the Exodus, especially as it surrounds the, the, the calf here, the golden calf, the golden bull. <laughs> yep, this story is full of a lot of bull. God's blessings be with you as you contemplate, can we change God's mind?